And so we're reminded of how important this moment is as we gather today to remember that because of our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, we get to experience being a part of the kingdom of God. That we get the opportunity to lean on the power and the presence of the Lord every single day through our faith and trust in Him. We get to understand what it means to truly be forgiven of our sins because we know that the ultimate price of our sins was paid for by Jesus Christ on that cross. We are so glad you're here this morning. Happy Easter. We come today to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the incredible love that he declared for us in that moment when he gave up his life on the cross. And so today we're just going to celebrate Jesus Christ's love for us. And we're going to have an opportunity just to fellowship with each other and enjoy the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit today. hope the song encourages you this morning because it talks about what we need most in life is that relationship with Christ, in Christ alone.
is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me Thank you for the assurance that we can find power and strength in you. Thank you for this day and what it means for us as believers in Jesus Christ that this day, a, a day of remembrance and celebration of incredible love that's beyond measure. For today, Lord, we know as Christians that even though Jesus was placed on that cross and buried in that borrowed tomb, today, that tomb is empty. And we celebrate the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit here with us today. Lead us and guide us in all that we do. May we bring glory to your name. And it's in Jesus' name we pray these things. And all of God's people said, amen. I'm going to ask you if you'd stand for just a moment. Would you take an opportunity to kind of welcome each other in, please?
notes and you may be seated.
survey the wondrous cross of Jesus and we think about all the power and all the things that he has done for us. Our next hymn will be our slash offertory hymn and we'll just remind you that there are baskets at all the doors and you give as the Lord leads when you leave this morning. So thank you for being a part of it. So I'm going to ask you if you'll stand and let's celebrate how deep the Father's love is for us. And as we begin this song, we will dismiss Children's Church at this time as well. How deep the Father's love for us. Let's stand and sing together. <clears throat>
But this I know with all my heart His wounds have paid my ransom Thank you so much and you may be seated As you take your seats we'll continue to sing and pray Lift our voices towards the Lord Let's get our heart right for the reading of His Word We're here, we've come to worship And let's make sure that our minds and our hearts are in that place where we can come worship in spirit and in truth. Let's sing together the heart of worship. When the music fades, all is stripped away. And I simply come Longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required you search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you, all about you, Jesus. King of endless word, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours. Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus Amen. Take your Bibles, if you would, or open your apps. There are several scriptures that we're going to spend some time with here in just a few moments. So go ahead and get those open and ready to roll, if you would, please. We sort of decided this morning, or this week we were putting this, this morning's service together, that we wanted to kind of blend a lot of old and, and new stuff and, and bring some interesting songs together, especially the ones that mean so much to us. And, you know, since Kim and I are in planning the service and we're sort of up here in charge, we get to pick the music. So we picked a lot of songs for us today that are very special. And the next one is one that's been around a long time. Most of you have heard it. But it's just a powerful song. And you're listening to it from the perspective of Jesus Christ. It's as if he's talking to you about the scoffers, about the folks who made fun of him, about the folks who persecuted him on the way to the cross, and then the power again of his resurrection. So let these words set your heart. Rise again.
and mark my name. My love for you is still the same. Go ahead and bury me, but very soon I will be free, cause I'll rise. Gracious God, we thank you for the blessings of this day, for the promises of the verses of this music that we've been singing that reminds us of your power. Lord, we know you came once. We know you're coming again. But until that day, we thank you for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit that we have the opportunity to fellowship daily with in our journey of faith. Now, Lord, we ask that you bless us as we go through the reading of your word to speak to us, Father, through your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So last Sunday in all of our Christian churches, we celebrated the triumphant entry of Jesus into the city. It was that Palm Sunday service, and we celebrated with the waving of the palm branches as the kids came in, and we talked about what that meant. Then Thursday, Jesus met with his disciples in that time of celebration of the Passover. We reclined with them at the table, and you may remember, and they explained to them what was about to take place in his life. Then later on that Thursday night, we know that Jesus went out to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And while he was there praying, the soldiers came and arrested him. Friday, he's placed on a cross. He breathes his last breath. And the amazing things that we have to always be reminded of is that even in the moments of Jesus' last moments of his earthly life, he was thinking about us. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Then Saturday rolls around. We consider that in the Christian world the day of silence. It was all quiet because Jesus had been removed from the cross and he'd been placed into a borrowed tomb. And a large stone had been rolled in front of the door. But we know what happens on Sunday morning, don't we? And I want us to look with me, please, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, beginning in verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices that they had prepared and they went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. For the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. 
Then they remembered these words. I want you to stop and just imagine what it must have been like. What would you have done had you gone back to the tomb? You had gone to the tomb of the one that you loved and the one that you had been traveling with and the one that you had been ministering with and, and you knew that he was the Son of God. What would you have done when you got back there to that tomb and saw that giant stone rolled out of the way? And there there's two figures that are glowing so brightly and you're in mourning and you go in to find the body of your Lord and Savior and guess what? He is not there. Can you imagine what kind of feeling they must have had? And the response was, remember that he told you these things. Because in the last few weeks of Jesus' life, as we read through Scripture, he pointed out all the things that were going to take place in his life. He reminded them that the temple would be torn down and rebuilt in three days. And in talking about himself, the power of the tomb would not hold him back and that he would come back. And there he was. They remembered the words. Verse 9, when they came back from the tomb, they told all the things to the eleven and to all the others. And when Mary Magdalene, Joanna, and Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to be like nonsense. So Peter, however, got up and he ran to the tomb. And bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. You see, the ladies came back and told those old grumpy men that were up in the upper room, you need to know this. He's not there. His body's not there. And they began to question and wonder. And Peter himself runs to the tomb to check it out. Now, while you have your Bibles open, turn back to Paul's letter to the church at Corinthian, Corinth. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, please. 1 Corinthians 1, beginning in verse 20. The reason this is important is God is using something that is hard for people of great knowledge to understand. The whole concept of Christ coming as a child, being delivered in a manger, lying in a feeding trough, living on earth for 33 years, and then doing public ministry for three years. And then the power of the resurrection. All of this was mystifying and, and hard for people to understand. Beginning in verse 20 of 1 Corinthians in chapter 1. Where is the wise man? Where is the scholar? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. And God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demanded miraculous signs and Greeks looked for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolish to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom, and the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. You see, the world's going, this can't be true. This can't really have happened. Those words that Jesus spoke about the fact that he would come and, and he would live and he would die, but he would come back, this can't be true, can it? But for those who were witnesses to all of this, it was absolute truth. And for us today, as we sit in this place and we talk about this incredible biblical story, we are reminded of this amazing truth, and it brings us hope for the possibility of our own resurrection. It brings us hope for the possibility of having the opportunity to walk in fellowship daily with the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. For we know that Jesus came back from that borrowed tomb on that Sunday morning, and for a period of 40 days he walked the earth until he ascended to be with his Father. But before he left, he assured everybody that he would send a helper. And that helper is the power of the Holy Spirit. And so today... We have the opportunity through our faith and trust in Jesus Christ to walk in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So we see that God used all of this to confuse. I love that fact that said when Scripture says that they were looking for more signs. It's as if they didn't have enough. Think about all the stories we've read about in the last few weeks in the New Testament. How many times Jesus changed someone's life. How many times he healed someone. How many times he gave people hope. And yet it just wasn't enough. They needed more. They needed more. The Greeks couldn't understand it because it was based on faith, and they couldn't understand things of faith. They had to have everything in sort of a concrete form where they could understand it. Faith was something they could not grasp. But the Apostle Paul in verse 23 of that section of Scripture says, here's what we talk about. Here's what we preach. We preach Christ 
crucified. Because we believe that he was crucified on the cross. And we believe that he was laid into a borrowed tomb. And we celebrate the empty tomb. But why is all this so important for us today? Why is it important that we celebrate the empty tomb? Why is it important that we talk about Jesus Christ? Well, if you go to Romans chapter 10 and verse 9, here's why. The whole purpose for Jesus coming to the earth was a plan. It was called making a way. Early Christians were often called people of the way. And here's the way. You find it right there in Romans 10, 9. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Let me read that again. That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is why this is so important for us to understand today. Jesus' whole purpose for coming and living on the earth for 33 years was for you and for me. His whole purpose for coming was to become that sacrificial lamb. He willingly gave his life on that cross so that through our faith in Him and our belief in Him, you and I have the assurance of forgiveness of sin. We have the assurance of eternal home in His presence. And we have the hope that each and every day we get to walk with Jesus through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Easter is important. It's more than just plastic eggs and plastic grass and rabbits with long teeth. It's about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's about the fact that He gave absolutely everything for you and for me today. And I hope you understand that. You are loved so much that Jesus willingly laid His life down on that cross to pay the price for sin. Because sin is what keeps us away from God. The price had to be paid. We could not pay it. But Jesus willingly paid it. And by putting your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you get to experience the hope and the power of the resurrection. My prayer for you this morning as we come to this Easter service, and it's so awesome to see everybody here today. It's been a while since we've had this many people gathered together since this pandemic thing started. But today we get to come And we get to celebrate with each other through fellowship with each other. Most important, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And we get to say thank you to God for what he's done for us. I said it last week and I'll say it again. If you get nothing out of this for the last week or this week, the most important thing that you need to understand is God loves you. And his son loves you so much that he gave his life for you so that you could live for Him. I hope you understand that today on this Easter morning sunrise celebration services that we've been having today. That you understand how much He truly loves you. It confounded the wise. They couldn't understand it. And that's okay. But we understand it because it's faith. Believing in something that you can't necessarily see, but you know the power is there and you know that it's real. We often explain to our kids, believing in the Holy Spirit is like the wind. We don't see the wind, but we feel the wind. We see what the wind can do. The Holy Spirit is much the same way. We can't see the Holy Spirit, but when you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you have the opportunity to feel what the Holy Spirit can do in your life every day. And so I hope and pray that this Easter Sunday is an important day for you because it's a day of your celebration of faith celebration of love in Jesus Christ. For all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Would you bow your heads for just a moment, please? Easter is always a fun time for family and get-togethers. Celebration of spring, warmer weather, greener grass, pretty flowers. But it's also a celebration of the wonderful power of God to show His love for us.
For Jesus gave his absolute all for you and me today. I hope you'll think about that. I hope you'll think about the power. I hope you'll think about the love that's beyond measure. Jesus loves you. He made a way for us. And through our faith and trust, by calling upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. Father, thank you so much for this day and opportunity to come and to celebrate. Thank you for Easter, for the power of the resurrection, for the time that we have to come together as brothers and sisters in Christ and celebrate your love. Now, Lord, as we prepare to leave this place to go about our activities, help us to take that power with us. Help us, Lord, to live it out for you each and every day. Thank you for our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today after the service, I'll be around to just talk. If God's doing something in your heart and life and you want to share it, please come and share it with me. You may have seen the post I put up last week. We had an amazing story last week. A young lady came up to Holly and I and, and shared an incredible story. It was heartwarming. Warming. And I want to know what God's doing in your life. So come and share it with me, and I'll be standing down here after the service. But right now I'm going to ask that you stand in this hymn of celebration. Because He lives. Let's celebrate it together, all right? God sent His Son. They call Him Jesus. He came to love. I'll cry.
that chorus one more time, would you please? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Thank you so much for coming today. I pray that God blesses you on this Easter Sunday and that you take some time to remember how much you are loved by our Lord and Savior. And I pray God blesses you. And this week, I hope you have the opportunity to share the love of Christ with someone in some way. If you pray, God, show me that opportunity, I promise you, he will. You may not realize it at the time, but you will be that vessel that God can use to brighten someone's day. So let's go out this week. And let's live for Him. And let's share the love and compassion of Jesus Christ with a hurting world around us. Thank you so much for coming. There are some announcements there in your bulletins. If you'll take note, please, that we are having uh, Meals on Wheels tomorrow at 9 o'clock. And please make note of that for those of you who would like to participate. And also, I need to ask Ms. Angela Kelly if she would do me a favor this morning and introduce the two newest members that are present today. All freshly picked. <laughs> all fresh. Thank you all so much. Huh? She, Lisa, I'm coming to you. Hang on. <laughs> I, I got my list right here. Miss Lisa, would you please introduce your newest? I'm Tari Bay, named after her grandkids. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. I don't leave anybody else out. <laughs> anybody? Raise your hand quick. I did. I did make him a note, Miss Lisa. I got my note right here. I did. <laughs> but we are so excited. It's always, and folks, I, I'm one of the preachers. I love kids in their service. They don't bother me because that's the sound of a living church, and I, I, I encourage it. And so thank you so much for coming. And I pray God blesses you this week. And be careful out there. Don't let the Easter Bunny bite you. But I pray the good Lord will guide you this week and bless you. Let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to come and to celebrate. As we leave now, Father, we just ask that you guide us. Give us the love and compassion of our Lord and Savior, and help us to live it out in the way that we conduct ourselves this week, through our words and through our actions. Thank you for loving us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless. Thank you.